Hi guys, it's Monique with Oak Knob Bakes and I am here today to give you a tutorial on how to make a cathedral window pincushion. This is mine. This is the very first thing I ever sewed. And so while it is not technically a beginner thing, beginners certainly can manage to make it happen because I did. So if I can do it, I know that you can do it. So I'm going to show you today how to make it. I'm actually making this for a sewing swap. I had done a, a virtual retreat and I had signed up to do a swap. And so the person that I was assigned said that they like ocean and beach type theme things. So I had a little bit of fabric. I'm not using white because the background in the pattern fabric that I'm using is kind of a creamy color. So I am opting for that for my background. This is a 10 and a half inch square piece of fabric. And when you're picking out the color of the fabric you want, keep in mind that this 10 inch square is going to be on this, you can see, see this tiny <laughs> bit of fabric you see, that is all you are going to see of this fabric, okay? So whatever color you want that to be is the color that this 10 and a half inch square needs to be. You need a four and a quarter inch square a seven inch square of fabric that is then cut in half. This is going to be the back of our pincushion, so it's gonna be back here. And so we're going to actually sew these together and leave a two and a half inch opening in the center so that we can stuff, so we can turn it and then stuff the pincushion. So you want a seven inch square for your background fabric that you cut in half, and then you need triangles. Uh, the four and a half inch that I mentioned previously, that is this fabric here in the back. Now, here's the thing. If you don't use this fabric, then you'll see more of this. Okay, so you can leave this out and what would show here if I didn't have this fabric in would have been the background fabric. Okay, but on this one, I'm going to use this to be this one. So that's the four and a quarter inch square that you need that for these triangles and I don't really have a size you just you know I guess I would say maybe take a four inch square and cut them on the diagonal that these are going to fit here these this fabric in the middle of the openings that's where these are going to come into play so you need four of those I have extras just in case. And you're gonna need a piece of cardstock or whatever you want. Uh, some people use like manila folders. I've seen people take cereal boxes if you have a big enough cereal box so that you just have something that's just a little bit. This for me, this is just um, a piece of scrapbook paper that I didn't really care for. And you're gonna get a nine inch square out of that, okay? You're gonna take this, so you're gonna need one of these because you want to try to get this fairly centered. It doesn't have to be perfect, you know? But so if we have 10 and a half inch square piece of fabric, that means we have a nine inch square here. So that means we have an inch and a half extra. So an inch and a half extra over the whole length is gonna be three, approximately three quarters of an inch per side. So this you would, I don't know if anybody knows how to use this, this little slidey thing here. You put this on the three quarter line, three quarter inch line, that's what I would be doing. You line it up with the edge of the fabric and then you move the template over so that it hits the end. So I've got three quarters of an inch there. And if I do this, I basically have three quarters of an inch there as well. The first thing you wanna do, the thing with cathedral, with this particular style of cathedral window, and there are different ways to do it, but this way is mostly folding, honestly, and pressing. It's very important that you do this particular part well. <laughs> um, and for those who are new to sewing, <clears throat> when I say pressing, okay, well, let me just put it this way. When you iron, you put your thing down when you're ironing a shirt and you do a lot of this, this is your ironing. Yeah, that is not what you do when you are sewing and quilting. You are pressing. You are literally pressing. You put down, you hold. You lift, you move, you put down, you hold. It's 
you need to press. You Every time you, if I put the fabric over and I do this, it's actually, um, it's moving the fabric and it is warping it. It's distorting the shape that you're trying to achieve. So pressing is important and it is important to try to train yourself when you're sewing not to iron. You're not ironing, you're pressing, okay? So that's my little soapbox about that. So the first thing you do is you take your corners. Hopefully you can see this. I'll do it here. This might be a little easier. Or up here. You take your corner and you fold it towards the center so that you, you know, you have it coming in at that angle. Okay? <clears throat> and then you press. All right, so we do that to all four sides. I know you just saw me run the, the iron, but it, it, I wasn't back and forth, back and forth, and I also was barely touching. You do have to move the iron onto it sometimes because you have to hold it enough to get your iron on it, but you don't want to burn your fingers because, man, that sucks. We've pressed in all four corners towards the center, and then you take... The fabric that's hanging over and you press that towards the middle so you fold it up and the corners end up folding so again it's okay to move your iron just don't press in back and forth that's not what you want pressing is you know pressing so you're going to do the same thing on all four sides And I, I will uh, readily admit here that my 10 and a half inch square wasn't quite 10 and a half inch square. So my, um, my sides are not going to be completely even, but I knew it was going to work out okay. So I was a little bit challenged with the amount of fabric I had available in this color. And I really wanted this color. This paper is hot. So be cautious when you're when you're doing this. And honestly, I have a, um, so once you've got them all pressed over, you're going to take out, that's all you needed that for. We're done with that now. And then just go ahead and give everything a, a another press here so that we're fairly crisp. And you can certainly use starch or um, whatever it is you like to use. I've got some flatter here, which I like. I use Best Press sometimes, but I mean, I still have a bottle of great old magic sizing. So whatever works. And I know some people use cheap vodka and water. That works too. So we're just pressing down those edges so that we've got a nice clean, clean spot. Now what you're going to do is you're going to fold this in half. And I recognize this is a little futzy looking. This really is kind of the, the I, in my opinion, the, the futziest part. And you're gonna press on that line. You're just basically marking it for yourself. And then you're gonna open it up. We have this crease, you're gonna turn it and you're going to do the same thing in the opposite direction. Now I'm not going to press this way because I don't want to get rid of this crease. So I'm going to be more careful here at my center intersection. All right. So those are good. So what we're going to do now is you're going to take your corner and you're going to fold it towards that center. Line it up as best you can. Oops. Press that. And we're going to do that on all four corners. Please, I understand a lot of us are perfectionists, but recognize as well that there is nothing ever made by hand that's perfect. There's always a little, little variation, a little something that isn't quite right. And often, really, that's kind of the charm of having something that's handmade. 
All right, so we're on our last corner. So cut yourself some slack if everything isn't exactly perfect. It's not the end of the world. If you, I've, I'm sure you've all heard this, but, and I've heard it, and it's the one that makes me laugh the most. If you can't see it from the back of a galloping horse, don't worry about it. We're all our own worst critics. Now, we're going to do that exact same thing again with the, with the points. We're going to come to the center. And we're going to press them. And I don't know if you noticed, but sometimes spraying the inside and then pressing so that the starch is on the inside or the sizing is re can be really effective and help things lay flat. Look at the difference. Like these ones I hadn't sprayed before. So there's a little tip for you. Sometimes spraying the underside of the fabric that you're pressing is helpful. So like spray it and then flip it and then put your iron on it. If you've got really stubborn creases that won't come out of fabric, like if you stored fabric folded and you can't get the creases out, which can happen, you know, steam only does so much then try that. It, I find it's helpful. Okay, this is ready. Now, now is when we would take, and I don't know if this is going to be exactly the right size. Yeah, it's pretty good. Okay, now is when we would take this fabric, this four and a quarter inch square of fabric, and lay it inside. I'm going to press this because I don't, it's got a little wrinkle in it and I don't like that. Look at me using flatter. Okay. So this will go in here. And then when what you want to do is fold these back closed and try and fold them. See what happens with the fabric underneath. You don't want it to be buckling. Um, so, you know, you might need to go and trim off just a little bit. This one looks like it's going to be good. We're going to go to the sewing machine and we're going to put some stitches in. Going across here in, let me hold this up for you. Okay, we're going to stitch down these flaps and we're going to sew just a few stitches across in each direction to hold these down. Okay. So let's head over to the sewing machine. Okay, here we are at the sewing machine and I have uh, threaded my machine with the appropriate color thread and I am now just pinning these arms down so that I can make that initial um, tacking stitches because there's so much folded fabric here, it can be a little bit tricky to get through all the layers. Try and go right through the center where you do have that seam that they, you know, where they are just folded towards each other. I'm going to sew stitches to just tack, let's tack down between the, you know, opposite flaps. There is a tiny gap in the middle. I'm not worried about that because we're gonna sew a button there. Um, you can see on mine, I actually have an antique button I got from my aunt's sewing uh, supplies when she passed away. Uh, nobody wanted them. So I, I got a bunch of buttons uh, and I put that one there so I think of her. I'm going to tack these things down. So you don't have to go far. It's not a big deal. It's really pretty simple. Just a couple stitches. Now, because there's a lot of layers, you don't go thinking you're uh, driving a race car it's it's not a race it's just uh just to help keep things in place and so now we're going to tack down in the opposite direction and as i'm doing this i take the pin out right now because i've already got these two tacked down and i'm just trying to get this as close to the center as possible before i start to sew to tack down so I don't mind if over here is a little wide because this is going to flap open anyways and it's going to come back. You want it to see things. I don't know if you can see that, but you want the tight, the center to be as tight as possible to each other. So what I'm saying is there's more of a gap here 
than in the center and that's that's fine that's what you want but you want this little flap to be as close to the other two flaps as possible without overlapping in the center so I took my pin out because I'm gonna put my needle down and that's gonna that's gonna tack it anyway there we go and I will take out the next one and make sure that this is as, and now that my needle is down, I just lifted my foot so that I can adjust this flap as tightly into that little section as I can as well. And now I can put the foot down and I can try sewing. Let's see, are we going to work or are you going to break? I am reversing and going the opposite direction. And one more reverse, and there we go. We're going to start laying down our triangles. What's happening here is we're going to be putting this fabric in, like in there, and then we're going to fold this flap, this edge, over so that it does that. Okay, so you don't want your fabric to be super big and sometimes what I find is that if you have a square it there's too much fabric here so sometimes I'll cut at a more steep angle this is my my mini cutting mat I got this and I'm just gonna trim a little bit but I'm gonna do it at, instead of this 45, I'm gonna just move it just a little bit because we don't need it to be quite that wide on the sides, but you still want it to be that pointy at the top. All right, so let's see what that did. And this can be a little fussy. This is really the part that I think is kind of, you gotta get it figured out exactly what size. Um, I found this, this pattern, this way of doing this online, gosh, several years ago. Well, like I said, it's the first thing I sewed. I have no idea where I got it. I don't remember. I wrote it down and I never wrote where I got it. So I have no clue. Um, and I never wrote down what size these needed to be to cut them. I just always have fudged them. So, I mean, you could do some research and see, but honestly, just mess with it. You'll figure it out. And now I'm going to start folding this over. These were scraps from a quilt that I had made. So I'm going to put a quick pin. I'm not always a big pinner, but sometimes it just, it's just really easier to have that third set of hands. Or that third hand and really that's what a pin provides you so this is oops I I had two um, so this is holding this down for me but keeping it in, in place and now I'm going to start folding or really it's more of a curl even you just curl this back okay you see and because this is a bias edge it naturally curves. It will naturally curve for you because this edge is bias. It just wants to do it automatically. Okay, so that's just the way it works. And you, if you've never done this, give it a try. You'll, you'll probably enjoy it. You know, and you can kind of play with this and like decide, well, I like, I want this to be a more open uh, window so you just fold more of this over but you just want to find a happy medium find what you think looks good and sometimes you'll have a little bit of the the um the show like the inset fabric will fold over with it don't worry about it just sew it in there it'll be fine it'll be fine there we go. I feel like that's that's good enough. That one pin is going to hold it so that I can get it on the machine and get going on it. Now I'm going to, because it's held in place, I'm going to take that center pin out and I'm going to fold back the other side. Yeah, it can be a little futzy, but just just work with it. You'll 
you'll get it. You'll figure it out and it'll all become clear once you once you start doing this actual process. You'll be like, oh, that's what she meant. My triangle is still too wide. So I know I can see where it's folding. So I'm going to trim it. And uh, don't ever be afraid to do something like that. It, again, just sewing, not the end of the world. So I just trimmed that down so that as I fold this over, it's not in my way and it is folding nicely. So it's a little bit futzy, but it's not the end of the world. And you just, you know, make it work. So I'm going to do exactly what I just did. And now you can see how that looks. And now when I put the next one on, this is going to fold back. And you have that window and you can see the background okay I'm gonna put the rest of these on and then I will be back with you to show you where uh, where what it looks like and uh, to stitch it down okay guys so here we are back and I have everything pinned on this is directional fabric okay there's clearly directions happening I didn't care the direction that this happened. I didn't care if it was going up and down. I didn't care if it was side to side or diagonal or anything like that. I just wanted basically the color in the overall pattern. So I didn't have to worry about that when I was cutting. But if you have directional fabric that you know you want a certain way, make sure when you're cutting that you're really thinking about it. When you're thinking about, okay, so I'm cutting it this way, I want it to go that way. And you may have to cut additional pieces to get the direction you want. So just a heads up for you. Oh, here comes Mr. Lloyd. He's coming into the room. Hi, Bubby. What's doing? Oh, yeah. Hi. He just has to come and bump the, the tripod. Hi, hon. Yeah. Yeah. He wants to come and see me. Hold on. Okay. Come here, baby. Oh, he's a big boy. Want to say hi? Want to say hi to everyone? Hold on, guys. Say hi to Mr. Lloyd. Hey, Lloyd. Hi. No, he says no. I don't want to say hi to anybody. I just want you to love me, Mama. Just love me, Mama. What is it, puppy? Oh, oh, scratches, scratches. Yeah. He's purring away. We may have to pause here for a Lloyd, a Lloyd love fest for a few minutes. Somebody wants his mama. We're back. That was our, our quickie love fest with Lloyd. This is why I never get anything done. So back to it. So we have our block. All of our pieces are on. As I was saying, make sure if it's directional that you have it going the direction you want. And now we're going to stitch it. And I am going to try and get pretty close to the edge here. I, I really don't want it too far back because you also don't, if, okay, Ooh, I can't speak. If you didn't trim it enough, this piece in the center, if you didn't trim it and it's folded over with this piece, if you didn't trim this enough and it folds over and you sew too far back, you end up being able to see the edge of the fabric of this piece of fabric. So you want to get, if you, especially if you didn't trim it, as close to the edge as possible while still, you know, catching the fabric good. Um, some people go about an eighth of an inch. And I just really just kind of wing it. But whatever you do, try and be fairly consistent on each one. Just like you're going to try to be fairly consistent with the size, the width of the, the fabric turned over on each one. Just do your best. It doesn't, like I said earlier, it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, you just want to try to have it look fairly nice. And when you get to the top, you really, when you're sewing them down, if, you, if you're starting at the top or you're doing it, you're going to start on one and come, you know, this way. When you get to the next one, you want to make sure that you've got the, them folded over so that at the very top, they basically meet in the center. You see, can you guys see that? 
how that's pretty much they're like tight together right at the center and then they open up underneath so you kind of want to try to manipulate that as you're sewing and that is just part of sewing honestly is kind of adjusting and moving and manipulating so you don't want to go so fast that you don't give yourself time to do that without your fingers being under the needle um but yes sewing for those who don't sew or are considering it sewing has a lot of your fingers near the needle and you just have to be really careful now normally i would encourage you to match your thread to your fabric that you're sewing but reality is i don't have a cream color so that's my bad and i guess i need to order one of those so I'm going to actually use a contrasting color that matches the background fabric. So I'm going to use a blue. Um, and this might actually help you guys be able to see what it is I'm doing as well. So I'm going to thread my machine and get my bobbin. And I'm on my regular stitch length, which is two and a half on my machine. I don't feel the need to increase or decrease my stitch length. All right. So that's pretty, pretty well held down where I want it. Uh, that's much better. The machine is not nearly as upset with me. However, of course, as is common sense, if you change out to a contrasting thread, your stitching is going to show up more, folks. So you probably want to be sure that you're, you're stitching fairly, fairly straight as best you can. I'm pretty okay with that. Looks pretty good. So I'm going to continue on and sew down the rest of them. You'll be able to see me as I go ahead. I'll just leave it um, running and I'll probably, you know, do a little speed it up for you. And then when we're done with this, I'll be back to talk to you about the next step. guys I've finished sewing and uh, everything down I'm happy with it I feel like it looks pretty good I again it is always kind of chancy to use contrasting thread you can see looks pretty good not too bad it's all right certainly passable you can see we have extra of two of the Types. And there's also some, you know, loose like little end threads here because my machine cuts the thread for me too, but it leaves these little, these little lovelies. Um, but I'm going to trim off the excess just to make it a little easier. I think this is a 28 millimeter rotary cutter and my little, my little desktop tool. This is ready to go. So what we're going to do is we're going to prepare the back. And I don't know if you remember, I said we had a seven inch square that had been cut in half and we were going to seam this so that we had about a two, two and a half inch opening in the center so that we can turn this and stuff it. And then we'll hand stitch it closed. That's what I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna set my, my machine to a quarter of an inch. And I use the, if you have never seen this, okay, this is the ideal seam guide. I love this thing. I use it all the time. This has all measurements from an eighth of an inch, a scant quarter inch, a quarter inch, three eighths, half, five eighths, three quarter, one, one and a quarter, and one and a half. And so there's a little hole in each line exactly that distance from the edge of the piece of plastic, I guess this is. And you lay it underneath and you put the needle in the hole and then you can either put a piece of tape or whatever what I do honestly is I put my needle up I get the edge of the plastic piece even with the edge of my foot and then I move my needle so that it lines up in the hole and then I know that I have whatever that is so right now I have a quarter of an inch a lot of times when you're sewing something your machine will suck the fabric the the end down into the hole and your needle will just keep punching it and will make a big mess so some people will take just a little scrap of fabric like I have one here 
and they just lay it underneath and it's and they sew and then they start when they get there and it's mid sew then they'll start and it it just it just tends to cut down on that issue but um so I have this and this is normally what I use for checking stitch lengths and if I want to do a decorative stitch I'll run it across one of these first to see what I think and you know mess with all of the adjustments um, but when I'm normally doing this I keep a stack of two and a half inch squares and uh, whatever colors and then two and a half inch white or black or whatever solids and then I uh, put them together and I that's what I use to start with. And then I end up with a whole wad of pre-sewn little mini blocks. It's just a, a convenient way to use up scrap fabric while you also accomplish not sucking your fabric into your machine. All right, so I'm going to go down a little bit on a back stitch. And then I'm going to raise my needle, move it a couple inches, put my fabric back down, line it up, drop my needle, start stitching back stitch at that beginning. Because if you don't, as you turn the piece and you... Uh, that opening will get larger in your, oops, I forgot to cut, trying to explain things to you. And there we go, not doing a very good job. So, and then you just snip that piece off there. So you see here, I have the opening and that's, oops, sorry, here you have the opening and I'm going to turn through, I'm gonna go and press this so that it's flat and that my seam here is open. And when that, what somebody means when they say their seam is open is that you've taken it and you've opened it up so that it's laying flat and you press it that way. Sometimes you will um, press the seam to one side, which is you just press it so that the whole, it's flapped over and, you know, and, and a lot of times you're doing that if you're trying to nest seams and um, I can, I can make a video later to kind of explain what nesting seams is. Um, so I'm going to press that and I'll be back in a minute. I've sewn it. I've pressed it. You see how it's all pressed open? And that opening is still there. <laughs> but when you start to press it open, it naturally kind of wants to lay as you push your finger down. So that makes it much easier to hand stitch closed later when you already have that, that fold pressed. And now what we do is I'm gonna try to line up kind of the center of my, my fold there, my opening with the center of the block. And you still can see the pressed lines that you would put in. So you can kind of line up the straight pressed line with your seam line. And these are, um, oops, I did that kind of wrong, guys. Oh my goodness, I almost, I almost steered you wrong there. That would have been a shame. You want right sides together. So right sides together means the right side, like the pretty side of the uh, top and the pretty side of the back are facing each other. And obviously I have a lot of extra. I don't care. It's not a big deal. And I'm going to um, pin this. And this time I'm going to use big thick pins because I got to go through a lot of fabric. And some people might find that when doing this, because there are a lot of layers of fabric right here at the end where you're sewing, you might, if you have a walking foot, you might want to go ahead and use it. I'm not going to because I hate putting my walking foot on my machine. You got to take everything. This whole um, foot piece comes off and this is what a walking, whoops, sorry guys what a walking foot looks like if you don't have a sewing machine so you have to take off the um the piece that the foot that's on there now snaps into and this whole thing bolts to the side of the metal rod that moves the um the foot 
And this, what it does is it keeps the top fabric and the bottom fabric moving at the same speed because this has right here, these are feed dogs. I don't know if you can see this. See this plastic piece right here? It's like there's little teeth and those are feed dogs. That's what those are called. And there are feed dogs on your machine. So normally when you're sewing, your feed dogs on the on your machine are coming up, grabbing the fabric, moving it forward. And that's what's happening as the stitches are going. So those feed dogs are coming. So when you have something that's thick like this and only dogs moving it, it can it can shift the fabric on you a little bit. You know, it can make it a little bit um a little bit movie. <laughs> movie. That's not even well, it is a word, but it's not the kind of word that I meant. But still, I think you understand what I'm saying. This, because it has feed dogs on the top, every time the bottom feed dogs come up, these top feed dogs come, come down and they meet and they push the fabric through together. So it keeps your fabric um, a little bit more stable. And also, if you're going through thick things, it just sometimes helps because it grabs and it, it, it's just a really heavy duty foot. So if you have a walking foot, this is a uh, situation where you might want to give it a try. So what we're going to do now is we're going to, and you can decide, I mean, I'm going to use a quarter of an inch seam allowance here, which I've already set up on my machine. I'm going to run the edge of this right here with, uh, straight along the edge of my foot. So I'll see if I can show you. So hopefully you can see, see my foot is lined up with the edge of my fabric right here. And I know that my needle is a quarter of an inch away from the edge of my fabric because I used my stitch, my seam guide. Now this came with little plastic things to stick on my, on my bed, but I just don't use it because I just like to use the end of my foot. It's just the thing with me. This is what we're going to do where I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch along. Now, if you had a larger one, you could try to do a little bit, maybe a little bit more of a seam allowance, but I just don't feel the need. I think a quarter of an inch will be fine. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to start. I'm going to sew this and then we will come back together and I'll show you what to do next. Okay. All right. Let's get this sewn up. Okay guys, so now we're going to take the pins out. I think these are the only big pins I have left. Need to get some big pins. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just trim off. Actually, I'm just going to use my rotary cutter. It'll be quicker. I'm going to trim off the excess fabric here. Try and be careful not to cut your, your top. Just because, you know, you don't need to. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just, you know, get most of it off. And obviously, guys, this is a rotary cutter. This is like a razor blade. Be very, very, very careful whenever you are using rotary blades. Seen and heard some horror stories. Uh, people running that right across their hands because it skipped and it hit the ruler and did whatever. There are some people that won't use them without wearing, a, um, you know, the metal gloves that you can't cut. Um, that's not a bad idea, honestly. I uh, never, ever cut towards yourself, ever. Please, 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 okay? Safety first. All right, so now here we have our neat and tidy little package here. Here's the back, the front, and we are gonna turn this sucker inside out. But first, what we're gonna do, I almost forgot, we're gonna trim our corners, okay? So I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this. Up in the corner, where the stitching is, you're going to cut across at a 45 degree angle without cutting the stitches. All right. This is going to allow our corners to turn with the least amount of bulk 
so they will be a much cleaner pointier corner and that's you that's always a good thing always trim your corners guys all right so here we've got our hole and you're just gonna you know i mean you gotta be a little bit gentle you don't want to tear it but you're just gonna birth this thing right through this hole just be just be patient but this is why we backstitched the beginning and the end of that opening because you really are putting a lot of stress on the uh, the fabric, the stitching at the opening by when you do this. <laughs> it wants to get stuck. And you just got to work it, you know what I mean? Just finagle it, make it mess around with it, push, push, push. Eventually you get there and everything is fine. There we go. Now, some people have a tool called the purple thang, purple thang, um, and it's really just a pointer. I mean, you can use a chopstick. You can use whatever you want. I have this, um, which I use. I like it. It used to have a little rubber tip on the end, but it broke off. And this, the rubber tip was actually to hold fabrics close to the needle as you were sewing. But this will come in and it will, you can run it along and move it and it, you can use it to poke out the corners but you want to be careful that you're not you know doing uh poking so hard that you're making a hole okay so just be cautious of that you want it to be turned but you don't want it to be um, turned and neat but you don't want to make holes so and you know your corners may not be exactly 90 degrees as far as like super pointy and stuff but that's all right don't worry about it you don't want to push so hard that you actually turn the stitching inside out which you can do i'm hoping i didn't just do that no looks okay all right but yeah so you want something that's kind of pointy but not sharp And I like this one because I can put this up against the like the edge and I can run it the back way and it just opens and flattens really well. Flattens stuff out very well. All right, and so here what we have is the completed cathedral block. You can see now all my fabrics. I will be putting a button in the center to cover that join um this one you can see and it did it on this one too the corner comes out of the window when you do a like a um quilt top out of these that doesn't necessarily happen because of the way that you point you um, put them together this would complete at the bottom but i'm okay with that this is a pin cushion this isn't you know this isn't going to be perfect so i am going to press this very well. I'm going to sew on my button. You could wait and sew the button on at the very end and go all the way through the bottom. I don't really find that to be necessary. Um, so I'm going to put my button on because I think it's easier to sew when it's open. Then I'm going to stuff it and I'm just going to hand stitch, whip stitch basically, this together. And what am I going to use to stuff this with? Well, you can use all sorts of things. You can use... Um, you can use batting, you can use fiber fill, you can use, you could use, um, if you are a crocheter and stuff too, and you have like little bits and fluff, you can use that. You can use wool roving actually is really good to put some wool roving in it because as you put the pins in and out, the oils in the roving will actually kind of lubricate your pins, uh, which is a nice thing. Um, you can use rice. This one um, has rice in it. It's good. I love it. Um, so I will probably do a mix of um, rice and fiber fill in this one because this is going in the mail. So um, so anyways, I'm going to just go ahead and press this, sew the button on, and I will um, get it stuffed, whip stitch it, and then I will show you what it looks like at the very end. Okay, guys, I'm back. The pin cushion has been stuffed. The um, seam has been whip stitched in the back. So it's closed up. I actually stuffed this with a mixture of fiber fill and um, rice to give it a little bit of heft so that it will, you know, sit. Um, 
and I put the button on and this particular lady said that she liked the ocean beach so I tried to find a button that looked a little bit like you know the iridescent shells and I did so that's the button I used I think it looks cute and overall I really am happy with how this came out I feel like it's going to be a nice little swap it was just supposed to be a little like a token thing to swap so I think this will be a nice little thing to send to her with maybe a um a little note and uh, maybe some buttons or something just a, a nice little gift so at any rate that is how you make a cathedral window block pin cushion if you guys have any questions, go ahead and put them in the comments below and I will definitely get back to you. Uh, and again, remember guys that it doesn't have to be perfect to be really, really great, right? Better done than perfect. Just be creative and don't forget, it's just sewing, okay? All right, guys, have a great day and I will see you soon. Oh, and if you make any of these, if you make one, please share it. Either tag me on Instagram or um, you can use the hashtag OakknobMakes and I will eventually find it. So, uh, okay. Thanks so much and I appreciate you being here and I hope you had fun.